Hello, welcome back to Band of Badgers. Hopefully this uh, microphone is on and that doesn't really annoy you when I when I'm on it. <laughs> but um, hi, hello again. This is a, uh, I was going to say a bunch of badgers, a uh, bunch of bodgers really. But uh, we, we have Joe, Joe over there. We have Josh and hello. we have Steve hello. joining us. Um, they probably won't be paying attention because while we're watching this, we're also watching the PlayStation <laughs> <laughs> because we decided to go live when the PlayStation 5 was being announced. Uh, but I think we've probably got an hour uh, before Amazon and game uh, start taking pre-orders. So we probably have a little bit of time. So what we're going to do in that time is this. We have um, a couple of nice bits arrived in the post. So oh, these arrived yesterday. This is the uh, Rhyme and the Frost Maiden, which is the brand new set of dice from uh, Wizards of the Coast Dungeons and Dragons, which is a bit a bit rattly. There we go. So we're going to uh, crack, uh, crack this one open and have a look at what's inside. And also the Icewind Dale book, which didn't come with shrink wrapped. So I have had a peek already. I've gone through uh, some choice items, but we're going to have a have a proper look at that. And um, be warned. Spoiler warning. What we need is one of those big graphics that come up on the screen. Spoilers! Um, spoilers! We will be spoiling this completely for you because we're <laughs> going to randomly go through things. So if you don't want to know, we're just going to page turn and see what, what comes out and talk about it. So if there is something like, oh, look at that. Um, if that was a spoiler, I did warn you that that was going to happen. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you that the, the map. I'm not going to take the map out. Um... But you can see it on the other camp. We're just we're just capturing the zoom. We're going to do it in one kind of you know one go. Uh, it's not like we edit this stuff. So um, and then the, the the guys here will ask questions, and we'll get to it. Rules understood and okay by everybody. Yeah. Uh, Captain. Cool. Steve's like yeah, PlayStation any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his wallet ready. Look. He's like yeah. Harry Potter game now. What's, what's the security code? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, uh, the the Final Fantasy. Let's we'll just talk about Final Fantasy. <laughs> so Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> I mean, hmm, that could be interesting. Comes out. I've I've just actually finished watching the um, high school documentary on Netflix. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah, that's, that that's very good. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that. I'm still watching Cobra Kai. But, uh, yeah, I've finished. So anyway, <laughs> have you not we finished do, that already? We, we anyway. do this after the session. So let's have a look. ice, ice dice, baby. It's like uh, D and D got a, a little bit of a sense of humor on this one. Sorry about the light. I'll try and get rid of that. Here we go. Um, you get two dice. Uh, sorry, not two dice. You get two twenties. <laughs> wow, that vodka was strong. Right. Um, you, we get a map, we get some cards, we get a felt box as always, and you get a box that you don't really keep afterwards. If you're a collector, this is these are actually quite durable. Um, I'm not. Uh, I I use the things that the things that come in a box. So here we go. This is. Look, let me, I'll get this out of the way as well. Right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's have a look at this. Wow. Here we go. I get my dice my dice out. And we can see, oh, that's nice. That's, Ooh. we've got a nice little holographic top there. And if you, if anyone uh, ever played the original uh, Boulder's Gate and Boulder's Gate 2, they were, there was uh, an Icewind Dale game that came out as well. That's ah. where I remember that symbol from. But it's that's all clicking really into nice. place now. Yes. There was, there was two Icewind Dale games from what I remember. I can't remember now. Um, were they were they more uh, dungeon crawly than um, Baldur's Gate though, or is that am I thinking of a different um, no game? You had you yeah, had um, just thinking of Diablo. Yeah, Icewind Dale. Go go check it out. It might be yeah. on the PlayStation Five. <laughs> 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 so um, okay, no, that's nice. I like that compared to the others. Yeah. Let's get those out as well. Um, so. This one, uh, this was a descent into Avernus. You've got gold uh, hollow foil there, or foil, which is quite nice. I do like this one, and I like the fact it had these kind of mazes, and this kind of um, ties in with certain things, and each maze is different. And then this one, this was the second box set. 
So, you know, it's just a stone. I, I quite liked that. I didn't think it was that much better. Uh, I, my, you know, Descent of Tavernus was still my favourite when you compare those two yeah. together. And then this one, I think I think this one topped it. The colour scheme on this is lovely. There's some nice detail. Um, the hollow foil is really, really nice. And the edges have... Uh, let me see if I can bring that in. Um, zoop. There is something to uh, decipher. Mm. And every side is different. From what I can see at the moment. There we go. Oh, there's another one. So that... Ooh, take screenshots. Yep. <laughs> screenshots, check them out. So in the inside, so it's, it's nice. You always get the um, amber sand on the bottom. That's a much bigger one. That's quite nice as well. So you can compare the two. I do like that. Um, so we have, inside the box, we have a map. Now this is exactly the same map as what you get in the book, just much smaller. It's probably about a little bit bigger than the book. But the one in the book is about A2 in size, I think. So this is the all the individual maps of 10 towns. Nice. And on the other side is Icewind Dale, com the complete Icewind Dale, basically. Um, and I think they've actually added in some extra details. Um, if you go to the official D&D website, um, it's going to be a D&D Live celebration this weekend. And this map is interactive on their website. So go, do go and check it out. There's a, a couple of hints and, and, and tidbits of information you can pick up as well. Um, I, I, I did see this when I, when I first opened the box. And I thought this was a bit cheeky. This is uh, level up d your dice set. Let's try and get rid of that light. There you go. So this is... So descending into Avernus, you've got two normal sized D20s. In the in between box, you've got oversized D20s. And this box, they are the regular size again. The, the two D20s are regulars. Let's put that in there. They, are they and, plastic, Dave, or metal? Yeah, they're plastic. They're, they're kind of glittery. Oh, okay. Two colour. They're like a dark, They're like a green, a dark and a green. Yeah, mm. they're pretty good contrast on them. Yeah, they're, they're, the contrast is very nice. I do like high contrast dice, big numbers as well, on the edges. So really, really nice. Um, and they're all, they're all like that as well. So here we go. Okay. There's the D nine for those high rollers. We get, we get people in chat going, "It's a D six. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, Dave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they're nice. They are. They're nice. They're. they're yeah, they're attractive. I. They're, they're good. I like them. But in here, if you wanted the oversized dice, it's now a special box set. Now you do get a six a six inch scale poseable dritzed and his panther, if you want one. Um, you get magic effect accessories for the figure. If it's available in the UK, I will probably end up buying it. Um, it's available in December this year from HasbroPulse.com. But basically, you get the uh, the oversized D20. If that, will, if that will focus, it probably won't. But anyway, so I thought that was a bit cheeky of putting an advert in there for another box set, which they, I, I hadn't seen that mentioned anywhere. So you buy this dice box set, and then you realise, oh look, there's an there's another dice box set. I'm surprised Dritz. it wasn't a code for uh, getting virtual dice on D and D Beyond. Um, yeah, the um, the virtual dice. So the, in D and D Beyond, this isn't a code for that. Otherwise, I would have nabbed it. But if you pre-ordered uh, Rhyme and the Frost Maiden on D and D Beyond, you would have got your glacial dice. Um, I got mine because I got my uh, I ordered it by Beaver and Grimm. So I've already got my code for my glacial dice. Nice. Uh, so in the box sets, you also get a bit of uh, history. You get information cards, you get some monster cards, some magic item cards. So we'll quickly flip through some of these. Here's a card about Dritzd. He's looking good. And just a plain back on that one. They're not all the same. Uh, here's the White Dragon, which if you've played Storm King's Thunder, you would have seen this. Uh, we do have someone in uh, live chat at the moment 
Um, and his part of his background story was he met this dragon. Um, I can never... Aravita race. Aravita Turis. I, I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce that. Hold it closer. I can't see. Any excuse. I need some, I need some glasses. Aravita Turis. 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 Just call him Turis. You'll be fine. <laughs> Tori. Um, yeah, Tori. There you go. Normally in the books, doesn't it break down the pronunciations? It does. But that's in the book. <laughs> To, we'll, we'll find it now we'll, have to when we get wait to the book, until we we'll open the book <laughs> right so and on the back you have a description um, of who they are and, and kind of what they do um, nicely detailed and these are always handy plus with the descent into a bonus box um, it's something you can kind of give to players as well when you find a particular monster after they've killed it you know you can hand it over uh, there's Aurel the Frost Maiden so the Frost Maiden uh, has three forms she is a god She's a small god, a minor god, a deity, but um, yeah, she is a god, and this is one of her three forms. I want, you know, yeah, I wonder if that's the the, the friendly owlbear mini. But anyway, so we got awakened beasts with some details on there. Oh, and all these information is being written by a Dritzt. If you're a fan of the uh, R.A. Salvatore books, the Dritzt books, um, if you're a madman like me, I've got all of them at the moment. Um, at the start of every kind of main section, you get you get three scenes throughout the entire book, and there's always kind of that dear diary by Dritzt, and I, I I always enjoy reading those. Um, a black ice berserker. Uh, the black ice is um, tarnishes their their mental faculties and, and makes you uh, beastly, or just attack yeah. people. Twingers. Is a frost tringers. This is this is one as well. So there was a lot of um, talk from Chris Perkins, who's one of the writers or editor or writer and editor, and he's a fan of the film The Thing, uh, and so am I. And then there's the film The Shining, which I'm not a fan of, but he is. But the the film the movie poster The Thing is basically a, a guy in his kind of feathered hood. We used to go to school in as kids. It's always the coat your parents bought you and you never wanted to wear. Okay. Uh, that one, that's it. And Look deep into the path. Uh... Exactly. The um, this is they've turned it into a, into an actual monster. So in the film, it's not part of the film, but in here, this is this is called a cold light walker. And again, Dritzt, Dritzt is uh, is on there. Frost giants. So again, Storm Kings. If you're into Storm Kings Thunder, if you're playing it, if you've played it, if you played it as a DM or ran it. Um, you you really will enjoy going back to kind of Bryn Shander and Icewind Dale. Um, there are there are uh, the runes are back. Um, if you're a fan of the Dritz book, Quinshinabon, the crystal, the crystal shard, that's in here as well. Um, I told you, spoilers. Close your ears. There's the kobolds in in yeah. Parker. <laughs> so these are Icewind kobolds. Uh, there's Old Bitey. Now this, um, for those of you who will remember, the singing, the singing fish that you used to buy in, uh, yes. yeah, in, in in the shops before they were pound shops, basically Woolworths before they closed down. Um, you'd you'd be able to buy a singing fish and you'd stick it above a door, and when everyone walked in, it had a motion sensor, and it would start singing. That's <laughs> amazing. Um, this is exactly the same thing. So this is a knucklehead trout called Old Bitey, the spell has been cast on it, so when you walk up to it or walk past it, it starts singing. The book, Frostmaiden, has lots of things like that from uh, references from the uh, 80s, as well as movie references. I mean, you're kind of pretty much Castle Grayskull, you've got Alien with chest bursters. There's there's absolute ton of stuff. Um, McCready is written in as Macredus, so McCready, if you know, is from The Thing. See, told you I was a fan. There you go. A Goliath Werebear. How cool is that? He's even got an eye patch. Always wearing shades, I can't quite tell. I think it's an eye patch. But that's good. Uh, the Raid Nomads. Nomads. Remores. Again, Storm King's Fun, the classic. Absolutely loved killing my players with, with, this, with that one. Snowy, snowy Owlbear. 
Uh, very, very cute. I hope it's cute. Doesn't mention anything on there. There we go. Um, this is this is one of the the monster variants. This is a knoll, but this is a vampire knoll. How cool is that? There's also uh, vampire spawn kobolds and zombie kobolds and all kinds of stuff. Ten towners is up. Vuberg. And of course the Yeti. Ah, uh, the fabled Yeti. You're gonna need the Yeti. On those snowy mountains, you're gonna fight the Yeti. But overall, I'm I'm quite impressed with that. It's a nice set, it's very attractive. Um, I do like the information given in these, and I, I is something that I do give to my players when we play around the table. The dice, I like. I like I didn't think I would like glittery dice. But I do. Does, does this sort of expand more on the companion system that was introduced in Frostfire Peak, or is it that was more kind of a, as a starter set thing rather the, the than... Essentials, so the Essentials box, uh, yes, it was, it was... You could play it as two people. You could have one DM and one player. And mm -hmm. the companion was to give you two for two players, basically, <laughs> so you didn't die as often. Um, it's, it's set out in a similar fashion to essentials but actually there's more there's more in it than than, than that so um and we'll we'll have a look now so that's the dice I, look, I like them they are they are my new my new favorite dice i will put those in the background so you can you can see there you go i like those i'll put those on top of there my new favorites thank you very much and let's have a look at the book so the book here we go icewind down rhyme the frost maiden again there will be spoilers there is, that's, the, that's Aurel, the Frost Maiden, her real name, right on the back. Uh, in Icewind Dale, adventure is a dish best served cold. Here we go. For characters of 1 to 11. So it doesn't take you all the way. Not many of them do. And in terms of thickness, I've mentioned this a few times. Um, we've got to, it's, it's probably as big as Mad Mage. It is bigger than Storm King's. It's bigger than Descending to Avernus, but you do half of it is the adventure, and the other half is the Gazetta. So information on Icewind Dale itself. So any questions about the dice set before I dive into the book? Have you rolled the twenties yet? I did. Well, I did. I kind of did, but I packed them away. Actually. <laughs> so I was thinking that when Get you rolled them, I wanted the to know what. You did. <laughs> I wanted to know what numbers they were. Yeah. <laughs> so we could authorize them for for our games, yeah. you know. Do, 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 do. Right, there we go. Let's do this. Right, ready? I got a one and an eighteen. Wow, that's that's so, that's probably probably fair. One and a natural eighteen. I got a seventeen and a nineteen. Yeah, yeah. I'm keeping these. <laughs> I'm keeping those. Sorry, guys. TPK dice. Here we go. I likey likey. Right, so in the book we have seven chapters and an epilogue. And a welcome to the far north. At the back of this is actually a really nice afterword from Chris Perkins. Um, and if you didn't know, the, the, the books generally take sort of a year or two to, to write and they're already planning in advance. It's not like they wrote it in 2020 and then kind of got, you know, released it. But it's actually really, it's really nice. Um, statement about where we are. So when this book was written, it's all about isolation and horror and uh, not being out who who do you trust, who you, who don't you trust. And the statement he writes is about you know literally did they know what year twenty twenty was going to actually be? So here we are. We're filming this in twenty twenty. It's September. It's the day the PlayStation Five was announced. <laughs> it will go down in memory. Um, so we're in, we're in lockdown. That's why we started doing these videos. But it's really nice to to see that he wrote this uh, in mind. He was influenced by the stuff that he grew up with and stuff from the eighties. And how much of of what this book is and entails represents what we're actually going through now. And I really enjoyed that. So um, Chris Perkins, well done. I thank you for that. That was really nice. I think more people should do that. I was talking to. Uh, Kelsey from Arcane Library earlier before we started this stream and we we're talking about 
how she writes her stories and how she writes her books and adventures. And we, we got on the topic of, uh, you know, using real life things to help uh, tell your stories. And this whole kind of global pandemic thing, whether, whether it would be, it is something we should share or not. Um, you know, we're just kind of discussing that as options. And it was nice. It was nice to see. And R.A. Um, R. Salvatore in his latest Dritz book, there's a comment in there as well about, you know, what a strange world this is right now. And he, you know, he's released a book. And he's just, the fact that he mentions that, I think is, is actually really, really nice. I, I, I enjoyed that. So, um, if the moderators, uh, if you've got a question, if you're watching this on Twitch live, if you've got a question, stick it in the chat. Um, let us know if you're watching this on video. Uh, video? Blimey. Uh, you better rewind a few times. Just eject top loader. Um, just go to uh, YouTube. Any questions, stick it in, in the descriptions below or let us know on Facebook or Twitter or whatever and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. So Steve, how's PlayStation doing? It's all silent on the Western Front at the moment. Okay, right. We're not there yet. Just shout when they start saying... Is it Oddworld? Go, go, go. Yeah, Oddworld oh. at the moment, yeah. I'll, uh, Oddworld. I'll, I'll set off an air horn or something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anything particular you want to look at? I'll try just I've, kind of flip I've got through. a question whilst you're on that page. What's the yeah. uh, disclaimer? Like, I love those. The disclaimer, yes. So, um, I don't think it's their best one, but it is nice. Again, this is <laughs> kind of a nice book, this one. <laughs> the disclaimer says, the windswept tundra of Icewind Dale is the true test of one's metal. Here, it's survival of the fittest. Don't be fooled by the reindeer with, with, with glow-in-the-dark antlers and the tasty knucklehead trout, including the friendlier, more northerly, knucklehead variety. <laughs> Icewind Dale is the frostbitten end of the world. You can't spell dice with, without ice, my friend. <laughs> and don't don't give it justice like that don't and the frost maiden is not some demonic prince vampire lich behold a crime lord or arc devil she's a god and a cold hearted one at that and again the um you got some that's the, that's the cover the normal cover this is the uh the variant edition it is stunning um yes. Yeah, it's, it's probably the best variant cover I've seen so far. So, I mean, that goes back to a point I was going to make when you had the dice open, actually. It's like, those those dice boxes, you've, you've obviously bought the three sets. Yes. It would have, I think something they might have improved on is if they was to try and, you know, make them a group somehow. So when you had them stacked together, like the sides of the boxes form some sort of image or, you know, they link the runes together and stuff like that. Um, whereas then the premium book covers, you know, having them on a bookshelf stacked next to each other, they look really good. Yeah, um, yeah with the dice boxes, like you got red, you got the blue, you got the green, and they, they, they sort of clash against each other rather than being a a thing. And I think they missed a bit of a trick there. That's true. I think there's, but maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they thought they they wouldn't a normal user, a normal purchaser wouldn't buy it. I think definitely for the collector's market, there's something about it. I mean, the fact that it's in a windowed box is nice. It's, it's done really well. Um, oops, I'm just breaking it all apart again now. Have but, you deciphered um, the codes yet? No, not yet. I will do. Uh, there it is. There you go. Arve Ulturus. Mm. There you go. So the dragon's name pronounced according to the book are are they are they archerous are they archerous are they ultras ancient white dragon known as the white worm uh, are there any unique magical items in this yes book? there's a whole chapter of magical items. oh there's the chest burster so if you're a fan of alien there's a chest burster it's a red slard coming out of someone's chest it's a chest buster. Um, this was also a very similar encounter happened in uh, the Beedle and Grimm Ghost of Saltmarsh. They wrote an encounter of that someone was impregnated, one of their ship members. And uh, during the night, all you hear is the screams. When you get to get to the room, the chest burst has ripped out of his chest and gone and scored across the floor. And all you find is the skin. Of course, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you have this whole alien adventure on a ship on the sea and slowly, one by one, the red shirts all get killed and eaten, and it's only the heroes left to 
to fight it and it gets bigger and bigger. Low level characters as well, so it is a bit of a challenge. Um, but it's a really nice thing. So um, they've, they've got that kind of story in here as well, just as extras. And this, this isn't, um, you can actually have this. So there's an item in here, which was in, which they did in Mad, Mad Mage, which was secrets. So I'll skip to the page, there you go. So in Mad Mage, if you got a deluxe map uh, kit, you got a pack of cards and you could dish those cards out to players or you could pick for them or whatever you wanted to do. And it gave you a little bit extra for your character. And one of the things here is that you are... Similar um, to the straw tarot cards of sorts. No, because that tells you a story and that, uh, oh, that okay. sort of sets the game. This is specifically to your character. And this one is, you are a slard host. You know that you've been impregnated by a slard. You have two months to find a cure before it bursts out of your chest. And I thought, yeah, that'd be great. Just randomly, you know, I know uh, Joe loves throat leeches to cure people with. So, um, you know, just in game, in those, game, in, in game, yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. Have, some, have some holy yeah. water, yeah, throat leeches. Um, you know, just to, just to fan out some cards and knowing that someone has just picked that and you can see their face drop, that'd be brilliant. I would love that. Um, so there, there's a, it's a nice, it's a nice way of adding in some extra content. So you've got the character secrets, which I thought was nice. And again, this book is it's a good mix of old and new, and they're trying to do different things. So given the DM tools to run different adventures and to do more with the characters to enhance role playing, I thought it was really, really good. Really, really, really nice. Um, so yes, fantastic effort on, uh, on the part of D and D there. Um, the, the curse. So basically the story of Icewind Dale is that, uh, all real, who is the frost maiden, she's a God. She has decided to move into Icewind Dale. So she's come out of the plains, come out of heaven and moved into Icewind Dale because it's nice and cold. So for the past two years, the sun has not risen over Icewind Dale. Every single night she casts a spell and stops the sun from going above the mountains. Now it doesn't happen anywhere else. It's only Icewind Dale that's affected. So slowly over time, the residents of 10 towns, literally 10 individual towns, have um, started to kind of fall apart. And I think that's the idea, similar to the thing, where you don't, you start to distrust your neighbour. Not so much your friends, but your neighbour. Who are that? Where are they going? Where are they off to? Have they got a secret stash of food? No one has been or left for nearly two years. So this isn't a, a thing where, oh, heroes are going to turn up uh, on a wagon party or on a boat because all the docks are frozen solid. This boat is frozen solid. So somehow you may already be resident of the story. Maybe, um, you know, we, we were talking about this before, but you're a ranger and for, for whatever reason you've sheltered down in one, one of the 10 towns. And as a starting position, you can roll a D10 and pick which starting town you were going to start into. And it, the, the, each town has an in, its first individual mission as well. So you can really play it completely random. Um, so it's yeah, really, really nice uh, effect on those. So, so from that point of view, there's pretty good replayability as well, isn't there? I mean, there's there's ten starting points there, so there's there's yeah. ten different groups you could run with it essentially. Yeah, there's it's it's nice. And again, if you've played Storm King's Thunder, you go you go back to Bryn Shander, you'll see some some. It won't be your char your the characters. But as a player, you'll get to be, oh, I, I remember, yeah, that was the sheriff. She's the, the speaker, the mayor. That was really, that was that was nice. I remember them. I can talk to them now, even though it's a new, brand new character. Uh, it's a nice way to do it. You may have stayed in, in Storm King's Thunder. You, you probably would have um, protected Bryn Shanda. So you've got that. And again, some of this artwork is fantastic. There, that's two polar bears put in a wagon. How cool is that? Yes, so, it's very cool. Uh, how many... Um, you, you talk there, for example, you've got a starting adventure for each of the different 10 towns. What, what does that open up into once you've done that first one? 
So the idea is to uh, become situated as the hero. So visiting the 10 towns, you don't have to do all of them. That gets you from one to four. Once you hit fourth or fifth level, you then go to Icewind Dale. So then you go out, you, you, you start to brave it a bit more. So you realize there must be an outside influence. What is that? And so from when you get to like fifth level, you'll start to investigate a bit more of the story. But right now at the very start, it's about basically just keeping everyone alive and protecting people. There's, you know, there's the, the usual thing. Someone's gone crazy and they've become a serial killer. You've got that kind of thing. You've got uh, missing people or uh, missing people from locked rooms. Various animals are now coming closer because they're also affected. You know, the flora and fauna, everything is affected. So what's up for grabs? If not many people are venturing outside because it's just too cold, you're a perpetual, you know, it's not it's not bright daylight anymore. There's no warmth. It's when it is daytime, it's muggy, it's overcast. Um, and new things are starting to move in. So if you think nothing is around that much, what else could there be to, to move in? And then doing exploration, I, Icewind Dow is kind of a bit bleak. So you've got you know lots of expanse of ice and mountains and caves. What's buried beneath the ice? What is, now that the seas are frozen, what shipwrecks could you actually get to that might have been crashed up against the, up against the rocks? So now you can walk across the ice to get there. What happens if you lose your way? We've seen it in films where people tie a rope around one another. Where it's, you know, again, the thing. And you've got your parker up and it's just the freezing cold and you're getting, um, you know, you start getting frostbite on your nose. What happens when the person in front is now gone or the rope goes slack either in front or behind? What do you do? What do you do? So it's some really nice situations like that. Here's an example, again, spoilers. Um, they're burning someone at the stake. Nice, a bit of warmth. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it does actually say that, if you if you read through. Um, yes, they've literally burned a wizard at the stake. And the crowd get closer because it's nice and warm. <laughs> and you think, Whoa, wow, what, what's got public executions? What's actually, what's going on here? This is not the 10 towns you knew or you've been to before. They are cracking up. Um, loads of maps. And it's nice to see the kind of the bare, the bare undetailed maps are gone. I like the fact when they do paint them. There's not a great deal of detail, but it's better than they're kind of the black and white ones. Um, you know, at least you can see what's rock and what's ice and what's a bridge. There's some like, bits of furniture in there. The stairs are marked. I, I like that better than a plain map. Some fantastic creepy artwork. Um, that is someone. That, her name is Maud Chiselbone. She she has a magic cauldron. If you can see that, and in the pot next to the magic cauldron are bits of human bodies. Those are in some intestines that she's uh, sausages that she's putting into the pot. There's a head. There's an arm. There's a foot. Um, she's making a tasty human stew. We've got the town hall. We've got some fantastic artwork again. Is there any really like nice. survivability elements added into this campaign? Like in terms of the longer you stay outside, the more frozen you get, that you have to keep warm more often? Or is it just it, that, that that isn't really added in as part of this? Because I could see no, that being is. a potential. It is. So the elements is also an, another baddie. It's another encounter is what happens when you do randomly roll uh, a storm, a blizzard. How do you protect against that? Again, um, seeing, like here, here's a great piece of artwork again. Seeing stuff in the films, you just have to remember those scenes where you've seen people just frozen to death in, you know, on the mountainside. And this is a great one. There's a female tiefling and she's sitting there kind of in a crouched position. She's frozen solid. And then there's a person here buried in the snow. However, um, according to the write-up, I haven't read it, but according to the write-up here, they're not connected. So this person is a dwarf. He's called Blue Boots because he's wearing blue boots. He's buried in the snow because he died a few weeks ago. He was pushed off the mountain, probably by a yeti. But this person, who's been separated from her party, <laughs> has trying to, to find shelter and just become so sullen 
and depressed by what she sees. Um, does it say here? It doesn't say. Um, that she's just frozen to death. She's given up all hope after seeing someone else there. You know, it, it, it's desolate. It's alone. Who knows what you might stumble across? And of course, you know, um, I'm big a big fan of Beedle and Grimm. I'm eagerly awaiting what Beedle and Grimm are going to do. So I've been flicking through and seeing what Beedle and Grimm might actually bring to the table. There's jewelry. There's medallions. There's Was that a cobalt with maps. wings? Go back a page. Back a page. What's that? That is that is Trex. Is that a cobalt with wings, is it? It could well be. I need to again. I haven't read it. It's four hundred pages. Yeah, <laughs> I, I only got it today. Well, today, yesterday. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah. I won't spoil that, but it is interesting. But yes, he is a cobalt. <laughs> uh, yeah. And a, and a crystal. A, a crystal or the a, crystal? A, a, a crystal, it says, Steve. It says a crystal. I won't go into detail. It says a crystal. <laughs> I thought you warned everyone that there was going to be spoilers. Yeah, no, there's, there was some spo I haven't read it at all. <laughs> I've, just seen, I've just seen certain key words here. And it says, oh, crystal. That could be really good. But I think uh, there's it's spoilers a... and giving the game away completely. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, um, like Icewind Ice Dale is the main feature of all the RA Salvatore books, and I, I know you've read all of them, and uh, I, I've read a few of them. A few times, yeah. Um, how, how much of it does go back to the Crystal Shard series and um, the Exodus series? I think it was Exodus. It's, series. it's mentioned, so there's some other stuff as well. It, it's it's part of Icewind Dale's. Uh, Part of, part of Icewind Dale. So, if you're ever read the books, played the games, or anything, and you get a chance, your character gets to go here, rather than just going to 10 towns and then going back to Baldur's Gate, is not much. Go in there and being a part of some of those histories. It's not about meeting Dritzt. But just being able to go to those places and being able to shape some of that history. So, yes, the Crystal Shard is here, but there's lots of new stuff as well. But Artis Simba is here. The Ring of Cold is here. So, again, lots of things that you can kind of, oh, yeah, that would be really cool if my character met them or was involved in that somehow or had a piece of the crystal. So I think it would be really nice. So this bit... Um, has rumours. So basically you can roll um, a d20 in a pub and overhear some rumours. And it's a, I know Mike likes to do that. That's something that Joe is also thinking about. A way of giving players optional quests. So here's, here's three or four rumours. Two of those, or three of those, might be viable quests. One might just literally be a rumour. But there you go, you've got, you got to find it. And there's also things in here again. Coming back to the thing... There's um, a character here called Macridus. You know, is that a nod to Macready from The Thing? Who is uh, Kurt Russell. Macready. So, again, really, really nice things. More is the artwork again. The white worm. The body is still on her shoulders. Her rider. Um... Frost Giants again. We saw the artwork in the cards. Reindeer. Oh, glowy. They, they did say. There's your glowing reindeer horns. There's a snowy owl bear. Do they, they glow after they've been removed from the reindeer? Let's find out. If we want to. Um, definitely, definitely. There's a... Uh, got a submarine. A sort of, sort of thing. I won't spoil that too much. Um, again, like you know, here's a here's an item. Would be and Grim be able to recreate that? I don't know. Be fantastic if they could. It's called the Summer Star. Uh, you know, letters and notes and player handouts, which I absolutely love. Um, I love recreating these as well. Um, but that's a nice one. But in a, again, in the Beedling Grim set, the Platinum set, are you going to get that? 
is that going to be be done? So more more maps, more characters. That is astonishing. It's called the Bear's Head Cave. You can't really see it, but you've got there's a wormling there, and a wormling there. So really nice piece of artwork. Yeah, that is good stuff. It's re very well done these books, you know, and that the art the artwork is really nice. Yeah, it is fantastic. Again, the the sense of alone, despair, isolation. It's just an abandoned, frozen ship. So how long? What you know? Looks pretty damaged. But what are you going to find on board? Let's go find out. Uh, so if you're a fan of old there's a bit of a Shackleton three. picture that one. Oh, well, that one. Boat, boat frozen in the ice there. Yes. So again, yeah. you know, you could. You, there is a there is an overall arching storyline, um, which is the Frost Maiden, but uh, yeah, I think that so, could be. You know, again, going back to the the playability you can get out of this book, you could take any of those, um, you know, starting adventures or like the notice board adventures, if you want to call them that, and you could put them into yeah. into anything else, couldn't you? Any side quests, um, even just throw them into main brew, maybe. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to take stuff from this book rather than just plan it for the campaign. Um, so you're going to get your money's worth out of it. Yeah, yeah. I just know, I was just looking over at live chat. I noticed Ma Maguire was here. Hello, Maguire. Uh, cheers for that. Good to see you again. Um, but yeah, he's you know going to order some dice because they're all glittery and, and lovely. Um, if you're a fan of Baldur's Gate 3, the game, if you've been watching the trailers and the teasers and the announcements and the early... Uh, Access is going to um, launch soon, before Christmas, hopefully. That is a crashed ship, a nautiloid. So, you know, does that directly tie into the game? Let's find out. Yeah, there you go. The Ascendant, that's it. And we get to go on it. Here we go. Storm King's Thunder. Here we go. If you like your giants, if you like your giant runes, Ooh. I did maybe enjoy those, Storm King's Thunder. Maybe those runes uh, relate to the stuff on the side of the box for the dig not uh, these decoding. ones. No, oh, okay. this one is a different language. Um, um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know actually which ones they are. It looks <coughs> elven. I I'll, I'll have to have a look. El elven or dwarvish, obviously. Yeah, well, def I would say dwarvish, really, um, because of Kelvin's Khan and Bruno and all that lot under being under there, or at least from that from that area. Uh, never real. Another medallion. Are we going to see that from Beedle and Grimm? Got some symbols on this. A shield guardian amulet. There's a. You get to. So one of the, one of the dungeon crawls or one of the missions campaigns is um, an upside down building. I'll, I'll call it a building. There we go, some more stuff. It's huge, I mean, it's, we're still in the story here. This is absolutely huge. Oh, Rebel's End. Prisoner 237. Who could that be? Jean Valjean. Sky Tower. <coughs> Goliaths. So there's been a, an update to Goliaths, if you're a fan of Goliaths. Uh, the Sun Blight. So what, what, um, what update has there been? Because, uh, you know, they've talked about some of the uh, changes coming. Uh, you know, is, there, is there a lot of that included in this book, or is, is that for Tasha's? No, I think you've got, you've got an update on mag magical items. There are new monsters, the usual. Uh, the usual kind of update. But there is a section on the um, Goliaths because they, they introduce, I think, just a bit more history, uh, a bit more character creation for them. Here's one of the other, you know, I, again, I love this full page of artwork. Sometimes you get double page spread as well. That is a kind of, you know, you know, the, uh, 
Thor, the first film, and you had that mm-hmm. big kind of robot thing come down, and just a beam of energy comes out of it and destroys the, destroys the uh, the town in America. That's what reminds me of what this is. Cross between that and like a Godzilla meets a dragon, and made of metal. Or oh, a, a type of a type of metal. And there's another picture of it. So again, yeah. A breath weapon to utter, utter destruction. More pictures. More art. Next step. Another quest. Castle Grayskull, He Man, maybe. Again, fantastic looking artwork. The Island of Solstice. So is, is that. I can't remember what island um, we had in Storm Kings. It's been a while since we played that. Uh, it, are those islands in there as well? I mean, do you uh, get to no, you mean the, fr- the frost giant? The frost giant had a like an island they could move, which was a, a load of icebergs that they would move. Is that the one you mean? No, the one where Neri is, is killed. Uh, no, that's something. That's something else. Right. That's something different. This is this is. So that was that was more sa- more south of that. That wasn't necessarily Icewind Dale. Um, right. But yes, I know what you mean. Now. But yeah, this is no, we're talking sort of glacial, uh, complete glacial move, movements. Again, fantastic artwork like this one. That is actually uh, a, a companion, and that's that's someone's frozen arm that is holding a ball of some kind, an orb. But the companion is still there, still waiting for their return. There you go. Castle Grim Scale. That sounds very similar. I think I think they were getting yeah. tired at that that moment. It just changed <laughs> enough not to get sued. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, look, 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 hang on, just flip it back. Skeletor. Oh, look, there's a skeleton. Yeah. yeah. Skeletor. I like the fact. I got look. Look at that weapon. Lovely. Great idea. Ship's I anchor. I can't see it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a ship. Good. Ship's anchor as nice. their weapon. Again, that, that, you know, it's really nice. What else we got? The scorecards. We've got some NPCs. Giant eagles. The Caves of Hunger. Oh, that's going to be a big one. This huge map there. Severed heads of an iron golem. Oh, that one's going to get you. Sneak up behind you. And uh, Remoraz again. A pair. <laughs> Kill evil a pair. pair. I've so stumped be, you for hours. Uh, be warned. They will. They, that, the, be warned. The purple pair. Or peril. <laughs> oh, it, oh, it is. It is. <laughs> I'll cover that up. Um, you roll a d20. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that I mean, that's that that's sort of a little bit of an Easter egg with um, the sunken temple, uh, the Sunless Citadel, because yeah. that's got the Gutharis tree in it that, that you get an apple. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. and this is um, okay. So, if you if you're watching this and you're about to play Icewind Dale, or you're already playing Icewind Dale by the time you watch this on YouTube, if someone offers you a purple pear, um, eat it. Take a bite. Take a really big bite. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Uh, the Nothics are back. I love the Nothics. I thought it was a really nice monster to have in uh, in the starter box set. It's it, it the first time I saw one, actually. It's Fandalin. And um, it's a great monster. That's a really nice thing. Again, great artwork. They've really done themselves in a, in a frozen Acropolis look. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, you'll get pear leeches. So, uh, yeah, I was like, depends on what my constitution is as to whether I'd eat the pear. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that um, looks interesting. What's that? That's a that's a necropolis. So this was once a flying city, and at some point, um, it has crashed, landed. That's some more artwork of it. 
and was buried in the ice. Right. And it's big. It looks like a huge location. Um, so is that in is that in the Gazetteer section or is that, is that still part of the? No, this uh, is. Adventure? We're still in. We're still in. It's kind of. It's kind it's of mixed in now. Yeah, but that is a location. They're normally doing it alphabetic order, don't they? Yeah. That. This this this. Veneranda. Rubber large sword bullets things. Yes. Looks very good. The living blade. Ooh. Floating crystal. What could that be? Um, so again, great artwork. Uh, oh, this this is this is one I like. You, you can you can kind of see that on the camera. Um, it's a mimic. <laughs> that is a mimic wall. So remember, when your first level character is in Icewind Dale, don't lean against any wall ever. <laughs> <laughs> just, just go around and stab the walls every single time. Um, I'll have yeah, to get one in my house. Stop the kids from leaning up against them. <laughs> uh, trinkets. I love trinkets from the main game. This is Icewind Dale specific trinkets, so they're all kind of from that region related. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to using that. Let's say uh, a few examples then. Okay, what, go ahead and roll your dice. Roll your dice. I'll run with theoretical dice because they're on the other side of the table. I've got some. Was it a D100? Mm hmm. 86. Oh, that's a hit. Steve gets an 86. A figurine of a polar bear made of ice that never melts. Oh, I'm just going to be obsessed with trying to find the command word for, for turning that into a proper polar bear now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. I've got 39. 39. A delicate glass ball painted with snowflakes. It's here. Capped by a metal loop with a tiny hook attached to it. You get a Christmas tree ornament. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It sounds like a Christmas ball ball. <laughs> Josh is still watching PlayStation 5 and he's tuned us out. <laughs> oh, he's back. So I, I have some news. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have some news. Oh, I, I have some news. So it's November 19th. It'll be £450. Ooh. Or... Or I guess that's the disc version, or the non-disc version is three hundred and sixty. Okay, we're going disc version for four hundred and fifty pounds. Nineteenth November is the same date as the Xbox, I think, but that's at least you know that's nearly fifty quid cheaper. Xbox yeah. is four nine nine. Just tell me when the uh, pre-orders are going out, Steve. I want Amazon or Game. Whatever's going to get me here first. I've got both open. <laughs> Or order two, and I give you the money. Um, <laughs> it also matches if you're a fan of the D and D books, which is probably why you should be watching this. Um, and you've you've read, you've run the games, or you've played a lot of the games. You might have come across an obelisk, and you might have come across an obelisk in every game you've run and every game you've played from the fifth edition box uh, book set. Now, I don't know what they what they all what they all for. But in this one, there is another obelisk. So just, uh, that might I don't know, maybe it's something to do with a new, like the final book of 5th edition. Maybe it's to do with something else, a new world perhaps, and the obelisks. Once we find out who's been stealing the obelisks, um, we might get something out of that. But Maybe they all connect. Maybe they do. Into a big or campaign. Jenga. Someone's playing Jenga somewhere. <laughs> no. Didn't, didn't the giant the, the giants stole the last the one in um they the they did but it depends what for yes snooker it's like yeah. pokemon you got to catch them all yeah yeah they're traveling around the world the giants are definitely up just... to something <laughs> um or it, it, it could just be a complete red herring so we're into we're into the monsters now here we go. We've got some... Uh, we're near, I, near. I really hope it's not a big red herring. I, I would love it to do something where they've just put in an obelisk and that's it. You know, so we get we get to the last book or, you know, there's lots of rumours about Spelljammer, um, something like that, and maybe that is how we connect to another world. 
someone is, has gone around the planet collecting the obelisks and they're going to, to use it somehow. Somehow, somewhere. So there's all real. You've got three, <coughs> eight, three, no, one, two, three, four. Imagine if they introduced five. aliens into D and D, that would be quite an interesting. Uh... Well, we've got a, a slide. I, I did that thirty thing. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did that to my orphan ranger. We were fighting aliens and with alien eggs and face huggers, and then we turned around. There was a poxy predator standing there. <laughs> so it was very, it was very good, and that was a crushed spaceship that we found. And um, what what challenge rating is is uh, aerial? Aerial. I'm going to call her aerial now because I'm just not going to get the pronunciation right. Real. Um, so let's have a look. Where is it? 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 Challenge nine in her first form. Challenge ten in her second form. Challenge eleven in her third form. And then you get a brain in the jar. <laughs> so, a brain in the jar. There you go. I say we quickly roll up some level 20 characters and fight against uh, Ariel. See, <laughs> I, we, we could, well, yeah, I mean, the, joking, max, the max is level 11, but we could do <laughs> 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 You'd probably wipe her out. Um, here's the weird thing. So this is a brain in a jar. Now, it's a brain in a jar, okay? <laughs> but it says undead. So yeah. is it an undead brain in a jar? But isn't an undead brain kind of useless because they're brain dead I've, I've got a different interpretation for it yeah. it's a brain in a jar owned by an undead ooh see, so Steve, you know Steve always twist it a little bit further he's like it's a, it's a pickled brain in a jar yeah. and, twist but it. you know on that we um, we've got many for that haven't we weirdly because it was in a companion set but like <laughs> Was there? Was there a brain in the yeah. jar? Yeah, I'm sure it was, yeah. Oh, right. yeah it, was, it was one of the sci-fi companions. I'm like, I'll, I will check, but I'm positive I've right. seen the brain in the jar. Frost giant skeleton, always handy to have. Um, and that's that's one of the WizKids minis as well, premium minis, isn't it? The, yes. The, the jar. So we've seen that one. We've seen that in, again, one of Beetle and Grimm's announcements for their Platinum Edition. Uh, you get this as part of the Platinum Edition. You get a few more. But you get that one as part of the platinum condition. They showed that. And uh, Goliath Werebear, we saw that earlier. There's a hair. Which is weird. And I haven't read it properly yet. Uh, but it's a hair. Uh, and if you watch uh, D&D Beyond's Todd Talks, they uh, Todd Kenrick has done something. So on his little YouTube thumbnail, He's got these are the creepy, creepy encounters of, you know, creepy monsters from uh, Ice Cream Dale. And they used the picture of the hair. And then I was wondering, oh, what is it? Well, so in the, in the thing, it's the, the cat, hair. isn't it? The cat yes. used to really scare the hell out of me. So I wonder if they've done something similar with the hair, like a red slard infested hair or something. That could be good, is, it an, yeah. is it an actual hair or is it an owl? No, the, the stats is a hair. The stats is for a rabbit. You know, the Almirage is like basically a rabbit with a unicorn horn, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've, got, I've got a DM's question, actually. Sorry to get you to flip back two pages, but can you go back to Werebear? Werebear, yeah. yeah. Now, that, that, that would be pretty cool to play as a PC, actually, wouldn't it? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, would, would that be something that you would consider letting a player play? Uh, yes. I mean, it's probably going to be something you can uh, work with your DM to build. There's bound to be something that's going to appear on DM's Guild anyway. Um, and you never know. This might also be in Unearthed Arcana as a playable character, playable race. But yes, I think it's a great idea. Because I think the artwork looks great on that. That's, that's yeah. a really, really good... Um, piece of art in terms of a monster yeah you could take the stats from a goliath maybe and just say you are a yeah it, it, it does say goliath that. shape changer so yeah i think it's um i think it's definitely a good idea you've got some kobolds is a kobold variants so you've got uh zombie kobolds 
vampire spawn kobolds, which look absolutely nasty. I mean, the, the teeth on this thing. Wow. Nice. Yeah, Reminds nice. me of the, uh, the lizard, lizard from Mulan. <laughs> but um, a little bit more angry. Yeah. If, if you're a fan of Eberron, uh, living spells are back. So this is a living Bigby's hand, which I think is excellent, because Bigby's hand is a fantastic spell. And this one's just going to chase after you, just go <laughs> squeeze you. Um, really, really Yeah, cool. I really like living spells. They're awesome. This is uh, maybe a potential playable race as well. This is the Magan, or Magen. They are magical human-like beings created by a wizard spell. So that could be that could be interesting. Oh, and these are my, these are my I think the the favourite thing here. This is. Uh, baby lich. No, they are <laughs> uh, mind flayers who, well, you know, because you've seen the, the Baldur's Gate 3 teaser, you know, you put the worm in the eye and that off, over time it transforms you into a mind flayer. They were, these, these ones were originally gnomes and for some reason huh. they don't, it doesn't take to gnomes very well. So they stay small. You have to have a proper read, but some kind there's some kind of uh, innate magic ability regarding gnomes, and uh, mini lich. Yep. <laughs> Saber tooth tigers. Anybody wants a companion? A giant sperm whale. Oh, look, there is a snow golem. So no one make a snowman, because there's there's your. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, from Frozen, Yuri. Is it Yuri? Uh, no, it's not Yuri. Tomb Tapper. We Hang saw that as ask. well. <laughs> we saw that on Beale and Grimm announcement. Olaf. As well. Olaf. Olaf. Yes. Olaf. Yeah. There you go. That's a one big evil-looking thing. Yeah, do you yeah, want to yeah, go yeah, to yeah. Snowman? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Just for, a sm just for a snowball. Here's all your magic items. Lots and lots of magic items, including magic fish hooks. There we go. Crystals. Orbs. Cubes. Books. I, I This is something that I would like to see. I would like to see, um, like, the, you know, I know uh, Beard and Grimm did the crystal shards for Eberron. Um, but you know, these kind of things would be quite nice. But I would love to see like something like that recreated, something you could you could use, and it actually had pages in it you could keep notes in. Um, I think that would be superb. So are they are they all items in in the campaign that you can find? Yes. Not necessarily will find, but can find. Can find. It is possible to find these books. And there is there is the rhyme of the Frost Maiden. There is the poem. I won't read that out. Um, and then the map, and then the back of the book, we did it. Fantastic. That only took an hour. Hey. <laughs> there we go. That didn't include the dice as well, though. That didn't include yeah. the dice. But yeah, so that's, um, overall, I'm really looking forward to playing it. I'm going to have a proper read first. Um, and we've already discussed about doing things, uh, you know, playing the game, when we're going to play the game. Um, if you've seen our other channels, our other channels, our channel on YouTube, um, check out Rise of the Ruined Lords, which is our Pezo game. We've also got, as as we're recording this now, um, it's not yet out, but we will be re releasing uh, Tomb of Annihilation coming soon. Also sponsored by Beaver and Grimm, and we've got Steve down. So Joe will be Joe that one. He will be doing Tomb of Annihilation, and Steve that one. He will be running... Oh, have we decided yet? We're going with Alien first? Yeah, we're going with Alien first. So Alien RPG followed by Starfinder, maybe? Yeah, Starfinder, beginning of the box. Cool. And we've got a, lot, a few people interested in that. So we've got um, uh, a few people who are who, who want to be uh, guests. I was talking to uh, Josh from... Or Josh McGuire from McGuire Review. 
Uh, he's, I don't think I don't know if he's still in chat. Yep, um, but is. basically, he is up for being a permanent. Uh, should I say uh, permanent player? So that could be something to consider, Steve. We've got Starfinder, we've got Alien, we've got Coriolis. Really? If we can yeah. work out the, uh, if this ends up not being too much hard work. Well, it's, it's mid afternoon for for Josh, not that Josh, that Josh, not that Josh. Yeah, we'll Josh, Josh in chat. <laughs> yeah, Josh in chat. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. So that, stay tuned to our other programs, up and coming programs. We got tons more to come out, including. When we finally get, well, when I finally get my hands on it, the Beedle and Grimm edition of Ice Wind Down, we've ordered the Platinum edition. Um, we will be playing that uh, on a live stream. We'll have guest players and everything else. So if you're interested in joining us for that, please do. Um, if you want to be a guest player, get in touch. Um, if you want to be a guest player for Tomb of Annihilation, if you want to get, be a guest player for any of our games, including Alien, Starfinder, and Pathfinder, D&D, whatever we're doing, just get in touch. If you don't ask, you don't get. So ask. Please do. That, that's, that should be a motto. It is my motto. Don't ask, you don't get. That is, yeah. That's my life uh, motto. <laughs> so, yes. If you're um, a publisher, a producer, a manufacturer, you're a writer, creator, an artist, get in touch. We'll happily uh, help promote what you do. And when we're out of lockdown, when we're properly back at our gaming tables, we will showcase all of the richness of that. We'll, we'll do what we can here. We have, um, again, look at our other programs, check out our other, other bits and pieces. We've got TVs and minis and all kinds of 3D printed items and mold injected printed items. Just items, really. Um, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Just, just check us out. So, if you still want to hang around, if you're watching us on Twitch, stay with us. We've got another little uh, thing to open up and take a look at. We won't take an hour on it, we'll, I promise. Uh, but it's something exciting that turned into post, turned up into post today. If you're watching this on YouTube, check out one of our other channels. Go and have a look. Um, but uh, we'll we'll see you another time. If you're watching us Twitch, don't go away. We'll be right back. See ya.